Hello, my name's Hans and today at Runner Brothers we're going to be removing the rear half shafts on this 1974 TR6. As you can see we've jacked up the vehicle securely and we've also uh, released the handbrake because we need to remove the brake drum so that needs to be done at the moment. Now we need to undo this one and we look at the arrows and make sure that we undo it on the flat bit of the piece here using a proper raw hard mallet gently this should just slide off we now need to remove these four nuts. These, I'm using a 11 sixteenths. As you can see, they've been uh, thread locked on. So we do take a little bit of getting off. Now we can remove that flange and we have two screws to undo before taking the drum off. Using a large flat bladed screwdriver we can remove these screws. And I'm hoping the drum will come off. Yeah. We now need to access four screws or four nuts through these holes here. They're half inch, so uh, just using We don't need to actually take any of the brakes off the back plate. Just be careful when we remove the nut. Just need to turn it around slightly. then line up the other two. Six nuts in all. So we remove the six nuts, we now need to go underneath and undo the four inboard universal joint nuts. As you can see I've moved this uh, boot out of the way, I've folded it over itself so we can actually see the four nuts and bolts we need to remove to uncouple the universal joint. These bolts are 9 16 spanner size. A bit awkward with the exhaust in the way. But just enough room to actually get a spanner in here. A bit more with the spanners. Carefully retrieve the nut. We can pull the bolt out. We just have to move it round and do the same for all the other four, all the other three, I should say. Right, we're ready to withdraw the drive shaft assembly. Um, if you can see here, I've folded back the rubber protection boot, so hopefully we can get that through this aluminium housing without it getting trapped. Just going to uh, pull this off the back plate because we don't want it all sliding out. That's it. That's popped out the hole. Just need to gently try and withdraw it, making sure this rubber boot doesn't get trapped. Just trying to feed the rubber boot through. Helps if I twist it slightly.
slowly coming out. Let's try not to damage it. Here we go. That's withdrawing the whole drive shaft unit. As you can see, we now have the drive shaft. We can have a good look round. Any visible damage to any of the rubber parts, especially the gator that goes over the spline bit of the coupling. As you can see, this moves nicely backwards and forwards, and we can twist it to feel any play in the splines. We can also check for any play in the universal joints. As you can see, these are still lovely and tight. Um, unfortunately, these don't have any grease points, so we can't inject any more grease anywhere. Checking the other one. That's lovely and tight. It's not loose at all. All the clips are in position. A bit difficult to check the uh, bearing while it's uh, off the vehicle, but it feels lovely and smooth. Whatever you do, don't undo anything unless you're going to strip down the bearing. Before we refit the drive shaft, I'm just going to get hold of the flange check for any play in it, make sure it feels lovely and smooth as we turn it around. This one feels fine, but it might not might have come loose or it might be leaking oil, so just make sure this is in good condition before we refit the drive shaft. Now, should you need to replace the drive shafts on your TR, Rimmer Bros has a couple of options available. The first of which is the standard equipment. These are offered as a reconditioned assembly and supplied less the studs, dependent on steel or wire wheels fitted to your vehicle. So if you're looking for something a bit different, this is the second option we have available. These CV units are far superior to the drive shafts originally fitted by Triumph. As you can see, the CV units are supplied with the wheel studs, which can be cut down to suit wire wheel applications. The drive flange itself is thicker than the original unit for improved strength. So the uprated bearing carrier is produced from a billet alloy. They're fitted with genuine Timkin uh, wheel bearings, which are to a larger and solidly spaced specification, making them much stronger than the original unit. So here we can compare the drive shafts against each other. The original unit is fitted by Triumph using the UJ, which is absolutely fine if you're in 1976, but today we can offer an improvement. As the name suggests, constant velocity or CV joint these uprated units offer a smoother drive line with reduced power loss. So the installation of these units is nice and straightforward. As Hans has already shown us, the standard drive shaft slides through the trailing arm assembly to meet the differential. The uprated CV unit splits into two. The drive shaft can be installed from underneath the car, through the trailing arm, back onto the differential, to meet with the hub assembly, which can be fitted from the outside. If you'd like any more information on these units, please contact our sales team. Before refitting the uh, drive shaft assembly, I'm just going to, uh, if any of these studs need replacing, we should fit new ones. As you can see, all those are perfectly good, so we're just going to fit new nylock nuts. So to refit the drive shaft, as you can see, I have this uh, lovely rubber gator folded down, and I'm going to try and hold it and refit it through the hole. It's quite tight fitting it through here, but hopefully we can push it through a lot easier than what it came out. Careful not to damage any of the rubber stuff. Slowly going in. We just gently line up the studs. Careful with the brake spring, and that's, uh, that's in position. We need to uh, fit the six nuts onto those studs, so I'm going to cheat and use this little magnetic tool to uh, poke them through the hole. Twizzle them round a few times and it'll alternatively we can just pop them in the socket and do them that way. We're using new nuts and these are nylock ones. 
going to evenly tighten them all round. We can now tighten up these six nuts and these are tightened up to uh, 16 pounds per foot. We decided to refit the original drive shaft back because we've inspected it, we found it to be perfectly good, but if we did need to replace it, there is an alternative which has CV joints in the drive shaft and is a more modern replacement. But uh, as we can't find anything wrong, we're refitting the old unit. We could replace the bolts with new ones, but the old ones are absolutely perfect condition, so we're going to reuse them. We need to line up the holes and first of all slide one in and hopefully we can turn it around and get another one in. Once we get two in it makes it a lot easier to turn around. To get all four bolts in and then we'll put the nuts on. As you can see it's a little bit fiddly. But uh, we'll go around and do all the other four. As you can see we've nipped up all the nuts, we've just got to tighten them up. Fortunately we can't put a torque wrench so we're just going to give it at least a couple of grunts. Ooh, that's one. Try again. Yep, yeah, that's tight. Just because to do all the other three. Well we've uh, tightened up the uh, nuts on the end of the inboard universal joint. We just need to fold back this rubber protective gaiter to cover it. Uh, if I gently turn it and fold it, it should go back to where it was. As you can see we've uh, finished at the inboard joint, we just need to replace the uh, brake drum. Make sure everything's okay. Line up the two holes for the small screws and then They should line up. Clip up the screws and we need to refit this hub adapter. Just going to find some uh, Loctite to put on the screw threads to hold them. Just going to put some thread lock onto these threads. Don't really want these coming undone. Break on. Hopefully, tighten it up without it slipping. These nuts are done up to 80 pounds per foot. Well that's all that done. Just need to replace the wheel and get a nice cup of coffee.
we can recheck that in a few uh, miles or so just to make sure it's tight. And that's the uh, job done. <laughs>